let us start this video by defining the concept of autocovariance or the covariance between a time series and itself. So the autocovariance of order or lag k is given by the covariance between y at time point t and y k time periods ago. These autocovariants give us insight in the dependence structure of a process, namely how persistent a time series is. Strong persistency would mean that subsequent observations have a strong tendency to stay close to each other. The example of a temperature time series would be a good example over here. Now, in practice, we will be working rather with autocorrelations than autocovariances, since these are easier to interpret. They're always in between minus one and one, and so they do not depend on the units of measurement of your original series. What is the autocorrelation then? Well, this is nothing more than the autocovariance divided by the standard deviations. Note that in this step over here, I make use of the second property of weak stationarity, namely that the second moment is constant over time. So the variance at time point t and at time point t minus k are the same such that the denominator simplifies to the variance of yt. Then the autocorrelation at lag k, denoted by rho k, is nothing more than the ratio of the autocovariance of order k to the variance of yt, denoted by gamma naught. Now, we can in practice, consistently estimate these autocorrelations by their sample counterparts, as denoted here at the bottom of the slide. The tool that will be helping us to inspect autocorrelations is the so-called correlogram. The correlogram is a plot of autocorrelations as a function of the lag or the order k. At lag zero, the correlation will always be equal to one, as it measures the correlation between yt and itself. At lag one, we have the autocorrelation between y, this time point, and the previous time point, and so on. So we typically see a pattern of decaying autocorrelations since the correlations between today and yesterday are typically larger than between today and let's say 20 days ago. On the correlogram, you will also see two horizontal blue lines. These correspond to the critical values of the null hypothesis that the autocorrelation at lag k, at each lag k, is equal to zero. So these horizontal blue lines are the critical values of the test statistic for a default significance level of 5%. If a particular autocorrelation crosses the horizontal line, it means that we can reject the null that it is equal to zero. Or in other words, the autocorrelation is significant. In this example, we roughly have the first eight autocorrelations that are individually significant. Now we have reviewed the concepts of stationarity and autocovariance. There remains one concept to review before we can dive into the ARMA family. And that is the concept of a white noise process. A stochastic process is said to be white noise if it satisfies the following three properties. First, the expected value needs to be the same for all time points p and should be equal to zero. Second, the variance should be finite and the same for all time points t. And third, 
the autocovariance should be equal to zero. A white noise process thus clearly satisfies all properties of a weakly stationary time series, but it is much stronger. Since property three here rules out any time dependence. In essence, a sample from a white noise process corresponds to a collection of T IID distributed variables. Now, how does this white noise process look like? Well, here is a plot of a white noise process that I simulated, which is nothing more than a sequence of IID observations. How does the corresponding correlogram look like? Well, the theoretical correlogram would have all autocorrelations equal to zero. In practice, we need to estimate these autocorrelations, of course, and some noise occurs. But we would still expect all of them to be small in magnitude, such that they stay within the significance bounds which you can also clearly see over here. So if you see a correlogram with all autocorrelations being insignificant, you can take this as a sign that your series is white noise. So it doesn't show any significant time dependence. As a final note, some of you might argue, what about this autocorrelation at like 14 here, which seems to pass the significant bound? Isn't this something we should be concerned about? Well, first of all, a correlation far away in the correlogram that is close to being significant is less worrying than one in the beginning of the correlogram, provided actually that it's a correlation that does not correspond to um, the order of seasonality in your data. Secondly, this might actually also be very well a type one error, which is the probability of rejecting the null while the null is true. And this error, we control ourselves by setting the significance level. So using a default 5% level, we actually expect such an error to occur 5% of the time. This wraps up our first review of basic time series concepts. In the next video, we will look into ARMA models.